on here? Yep. All right, sweet. We're doing joke time yet? Yep. All right, hey, let us know if you can see us. Sorry, we're having connection problems right now. If you're on our Instagram stream, welcome. Go ahead and type in the comments if you can see it and hear us, all right? And also tell us if our if the words match we, what our lips are saying or if there's like a delay. And if you're on Twitch, same thing. Tell us if you can see us, hear us, and if there's a delay between what you're hearing and what we're saying. We're trying to fix some of those issues. All right, I'm thinking that we're doing good. Is anyone sending out in the chat that we're good? Cool. Okay. Well, hey, I think we're doing good. I think we're ready to get going tonight. Welcome back, guys. This is Hillside Online Live. Welcome back to our second week of doing a live youth group format. Uh, we, we know that quarantine time is crazy for you right now. And so we're doing what we can to bring you a normal Hillside experience, almost normal Hillside experience, minus all the faces in the same room at the same time. But uh, you got a couple pretty faces here to look hey. at. Not mine and Parker's. Amanda will be here too, and you can look at hers. Sarah's also in the room. You just can't see her, but those are the pretty faces here. Parker's pretty good looking though. Um, all right, so hey, we got we got some cool things planned for tonight. I got another game for you uh, that's going to uh, require you to move around in your house. It's going to be fun. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, but we have a couple things to just remind you guys of first before we jump in. Uh, some people are going to be joining in late, so we're going to fill you in a couple announcements and then update you on some things. Uh, number one is regarding Zoom meetings. Uh, so if you guys have been joining our Zoom meetings, those have been a blast. We're, we're, that's our one way that we can actually see your faces and hear from you, your actual voices. And so um, we're still doing Zoom meetings tonight, just like last week, junior hires, your Zoom meeting is right after this Hillside online live. Uh, and so we're gonna try to end in about an hour. So around 7.30, we'll be wrapping up. Uh, and then we'll get on and send the link. So there'll be a couple minute delay. So as soon as we end, don't start texting me and say, hey, where's that link? Um, be patient, it'll take a few minutes for us to get the link sent out. Uh, and then you guys, the junior hires can join uh, our, our Zoom meeting tonight. High schoolers, you guys will be tomorrow night again at 7 p.m. Uh, have you been liking the Zoom meetings, Parker? It's been good, yeah, junior hires. Saying that they're having a good time. I've been enjoying it, it's been good. Good to see you guys, looking forward to the night. Yeah, missing, missing you guys a lot. So uh, remember our Zoom meetings. The other thing is about our scripture Ooh. memory challenge. And we have super exciting update for you update. for our scripture memory challenge. First of all, shout out to any of you guys who have been putting videos out there, recording yourself, reciting our passages. We got a passage from Isaiah, from Psalms. And, and a small passage from Romans 8 and then all of Romans 8. So it's been, it's been awesome to see you guys post those videos and hear uh, how your friends are interacting with you uh, about those videos. Oh, uh, yeah. it's, been, it's been pretty cool. So uh, a lot of people in our church are noticing too and they're like, hey, that's so cool seeing all your students post those videos. And so props to you guys. Thanks for taking that challenge on. Um, and we got some exciting news about the Romans 8 challenge. You had, a, you had a joke, I think, that you wanted to transition us into oh, this. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> so classic joke real, here. Real knee slapper here. Why was 6 afraid of 7? Could you tell I've me I've never why? heard this one before, so no. <laughs> why? Because 7, 8, 9. That reminds me of our 7, 8, 9 yes. challenge for our scripture <laughs> reading. So you guys remember we had uh, we had said we, we challenged you guys for, for uh, to recite Romans 8. And if seven of you guys recited Romans 8, then we would build a permanent nine square down on the field just below the, the hillside room. So we're, we're on our way to getting there, aren't we, Ryan? We are. And so the initial challenge was seven of you memorizing it. I, just this past week, got a video of good old Lucas Arnada. Shout, Shout out. out. Lucas Arnada Woo! took about a week, week or week and a half. Memorized all of Romans 8, sent me a video, got it recited. Uh, I was going to try to get a clip of him saying it up here for you, but maybe next week we'll show it so that you believe us that it is possible. You can do it. Lucas, you're awesome, dude. First one there. That yeah, means respect. only six left. Six, of you six guys. people left to get, get that it. challenge done. But guess what? This challenge has been so awesome, and people are so excited around church for this that we have an extra incentive added. Ooh. I'm pretty excited about this. So we had a we had a super generous individual from our church community 
who heard about what we're doing with this 7, 8, 9 challenge with memorizing Romans 8, heard about Lucas already killing it on that front, and he said, you know what, I, I want to up the ante, I want to up the incentive for these students, and what this individual has decided to do is donate $50 Amazon gift cards to anybody who memorizes Romans chapter 8, to the first 10 people, up to 10 people. So. If you're sitting out there and you're working on Romans 8 and you feel like you're getting close, it's not just for the not just for the nine score set anymore. We also have $50 Amazon gift cards for the first 10 of you who send us videos of you reciting yeah, leaders Romans 8. Too, leaders can hop on it, but I ain't giving you the money. Yeah. Students are the priority, but you know what? We'll see. I got um, it. Which means what does Lucas get? Uh, so Lucas is definitely gonna get one of those. For Lucas sure. gets a $50 Amazon Already. gift card. Woo! Lucas. We'll get it to you Don't as soon it as all we in can. One place, Lucas. Uh, we were thinking, like, what do you need during quarantine? And we're like, well, I mean, an Amazon gift card, you can get anything. So whatever shipping's a little delayed right now. You can't get it like tomorrow or the day after. But you know yeah. what? You can still order $50, whatever. $50. Yeah, you want a new video game, whatever. If you memorize Romans 8, the first 10 of you will get $50 Amazon gift. Isn't that? That's, That's awesome, awesome, dude. Wow, we got, we got really generous people in our church, and we got people who care about you memorizing scripture. Like we, We've been trying to tell you, this is a big deal, this is important. We're not just giving you stuff to fill your time. We think this is actually a good thing you need to be doing. And people also think that, not just us. Parker and I aren't just crazy about it. There are people who are crazy about this and love seeing you guys memorize some scripture. Are you, what, how is scripture memory going for you, Parker? Going pretty good. Started Romans 8, and we'll we'll see. I got, I got a ways to go, though, so I, I got to catch up. I think Lucas, I got, you got we'll, verse we'll 1 down. I got verse 1 down. There's therefore now no condemnation for, for those, those who are in Christ Christ Jesus. Jesus. Boom. You're on your way. Wow. All right, one verse down, 30, 38 80 left 80 to go. go. <laughs> but you know what? It's doable. Lucas Zarnata is proof, and I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Lucas, well done. One more shout-out. I, I know of at least one birthday today. Junior high girl, eighth grade. And Libby. Zoe Ortiz is today. And Libby's tomorrow. And tomorrow, Libby Kanoski. Woo wow. All right, so Parker and I would <laughs> sing happy birthday, but that's not going to sound good. We won't do that to you. Nope. Uh, if you guys, junior highers, if you turn, tune into the Zoom tonight, we will sing happy birthday to those two girls. And hey, if we missed you and we, we didn't know it was your birthday today or tomorrow or just this week, uh, comment in the Twitch chat, comment on Instagram, let us know when your birthday is so we can give you a shout out, or if you join mm -hmm. in our Zoom, we can sing to you, because that's fun. Lucas said he's going to buy some Packers attire for the good time. Lucas there has already decided what he's doing with his $50 <laughs> Amazon gift card, and he's buying for buying some Packers attire, because he is a diehard <laughs> Green Bay Packers fan. Man, Ooh. respect. Wow. All right, hey, so th those are the main things we wanted to remind you of. We got Zoom, we got the Scripture Memory Challenge going on, um, and, and just a quick other shout out. Remember, Wednesday is now at noon. We're doing some uh, a prayer meeting for any junior high or high schooler that wants to jump on a Zoom meeting and pray with us for the whole coronavirus situation. Our church is doing that, like church wide. They're doing a big meeting. Uh, our pastor David Schaller is leading that, and we're gonna we're gonna do it as well, just for students. Every Wednesday at noon, we'll send out a link and you can hop on. We had about a dozen of you join last week, which was awesome. So if you're interested in that, join us tomorrow as well for that. I think that's what we got. Oh, what's Thursday? What are we doing Thursday nights? Remind them of what we do Thursday nights. Thursday nights. What is Thursday nights? Forget. Parker forgot to. Forget. 7 Sorry, p.m. Guys. Leader devotionals. Dude, you oh, did it last yes. week. Come on. My bad, guys. I'm blanking. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, we are going to have our leaders sending you out uh, a devotional. So we're going to have a high school leader and a junior high leader. This week we have, for junior high, we have Allie. So yep. she's going to be doing an awesome Allie devotional Elder. on Ooh. Thursday night at 7. High school is who? Alex Bernardini. Woo! Love Bernard. that guy. Shout out. Love that guy. So tune in on Thursday night as well. High school, you guys will be live on Instagram. Junior high, yours, guys, your guys' will be on Facebook. I know most of you guys don't have Facebook junior hires, but your parents all do, I promise you. So go uh, steal their phone, uh, go to the Hillside account, and watch Allie give a short little diva. And so that's this week. We got, we got stuff planned for you this week. We got some, I don't know, we'll talk about some more things that we're going to be doing later on. But uh, for now, is it game time? I think it's game, it's game time. time. I think it's game time. All right, we got game time right now. Are you guys ready for it? I hope you're ready for it. It's going to be dope. I'm ready for it. Let's see if it works. Shabam! Uh-oh. Our game tonight is called Vincent Van Covid. <laughs> nice. 
Vincent Man COVID. So um, I, did, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but uh, not this name. We came up with this name because it's way more creative than what other people were coming up with. But uh, this is a thing that we've seen going around. Uh, actually, the Getty Museum in L.A., I think, is the, the people that started this. Uh, and they, they sent out to all the fans of the museum, hey, uh, if you guys can reenact uh, one of our like, famous paintings in the museum, send it to us. And they like, had a competition for somebody who, who looked at the famous paintings in the Getty and then tried to recreate it in their life and take a picture and then send it to them. So we're going to do our own version of that. We're calling it Vincent Van Covid because Vincent Van Gogh. Yep. What are some paintings Vincent Van Gogh made? Starry Night. Great one. Got a yes. nice self-portrait one. Mm. This one's here. Oh, there we go. Nice. He painted those glasses on too. Yep, yep. Sunflowers. What else? Did he Sunflowers? paint the Mona Lisa? Mm -hmm. He did not and paint the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. That was our boy Da Vinci. Da Vinci. Great Any guy. puns that we can make with Da Vinci? Uh, or in, no, I don't think so. Right. All right, anyway, Da <laughs> uh, All right, so we got Vincent Van Covid going on. So let me let me throw up the rules for you. Parker, you want to read those rules out? All right. Use only objects and people in your house. Replicate the painting, take a picture and send it to us or tag us on social media. So use whatever props you guys have at your house. Uh, we're gonna throw the pictures on up there, send us a picture of it, and then we're also going to have them doing it, sending in throughout the week, and we're gonna vote on them? Or what? Yeah, so, okay. so here's what we'll do tonight. I'm gonna throw up three pictures, three famous paintings that hopefully you've seen before. Uh, your job is just to choose one of them. You don't need to like do all of them at the same time. Just one of them, and then go into your house. Find, if you need another person with you, grab that other person. If you need some uh, different kind of clothing, if you need some objects in the picture with you, whatever it is, recreate that painting, take a picture, send it to me and Parker, email it to the Hillside Students at Church of the Open Door.com, email address, post it on your social media account, and tag Hillside, our Hillside accounts. Uh, just one, just one for tonight. And then we're gonna keep this going the rest of the week, and we'll post the pictures on our social media accounts. And we'll give you the rest of the week to recreate the other two that you don't pick tonight, uh, however you want. And then we'll have a competition, and we'll get we'll get some prizes to the winners of Love this game. Uh, last week we had some people enjoy some pretty tasty donuts, donuts uh, and I think that might be the tradition here on out. So uh, if you're interested in some donuts, you want to win this game, then. Uh, and so hopefully you guys are ready. Uh, let's see. Put a little thumbs up in the chat or something if you guys are ready for this game. I'm pretty excited. Vincent Van Covid. There's going to be three different paintings. You pick one, recreate it in your house, take a selfie or a picture, and then send it to Hillside somehow. We'll send. We want you guys going all out on these. Yep. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. On your marks. Get set. Covid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a lovely Frida Kahlo. American Gothic. And uh, American Gothic right here. Right there for you. Oh, yeah, there we go. Pearl, and then what's pearl, this one called? Girl with Pearl, pearl Earring. earring. Yeah. All right, these are three Love pretty famous earring. paintings. Pick one, just one. Either Frida, good old Frida Kahlo, American Gothic, or the Girl with Pearl Earring. Find something, replicate yourself, take a picture, send it to us. I Ready better see set, some go. nice unibrows going on. We want to see here. it. Yeah, it better be really good. Better, better be, be really nice. Good. All right. All right. And we're not going to leave. So that if you're just hopping on, you're not lost. In case you missed it and you like just joined in the last five seconds, we're playing a game. It's called Vincent Van Covid, and your job is to recreate one of these paintings. In you're not like painting a painting. That's plagiarism. No, what's that called? Con <laughs> artist. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, your job is to recreate it using objects in your house, using another person. If you're choosing the American Gothic one, and take a picture and send it out to us. So if you're just joining, hurry quick. You got about. Four and a half minutes Ooh. to get it done. Keep it going. How's the All stream right. going? Are we looking good? Yeah? Oh, Rebecca right. says, thanks for helping her with her time. art history homework. <laughs> nice. Yes, this was inspired by all our art history students out there mm, preparing you for your AP art history test. You know these are going to be questions on that test. Oh, yeah. Who painted the Frida Kahlo self-portrait? <laughs> 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 it's on the test. I'm guaranteeing it. I don't know who did it. Who painted Gothic. this one? Ooh, if you know who painted American Go Gothic, in the put it in the chat. No Google. No, no Google. Google. Ooh, if you're still listening and you're still trying to figure out your picture, you're not allowed to use filters on Snapchat. You're not mm. allowed to use filters on, I don't know, does Instagram do filters? I don't know enough about this stuff. No filters, and you can't look up pictures of stuff. That's cheating. Only what's in your house, objects, or people. Do pets count as objects? 
Oh yeah, we want to use pets. Oh no, we want to use pets. You can use pets. Absolutely use pets. If you're doing this one, you better have a pet monkey somewhere in your house. Come on now. And put them on your shoulder. You better have a dead bird on your necklace. Nice. Butterflies in your hair. If you have one of these old school pitchforks, I'd be kind of scared because they're looking pretty scary. All right, hey, if you guys are just tuning in, we just got some jokes. You might have missed what game we're playing, but. We're not gonna leave, so here's Parker with a couple jokes for you, cause he spent he's I think he was up all night, all night. searching Cold for all these night jokes, this one. just so that he could fill this time while you guys are playing the game. The Parker, best let's, jokes. Let's hear a couple of them. Hey Ryan, uh, how does Jesus make tea? How does Jesus make tea? Huh. How? He brews it. <laughs> oh, oh, get it? He brews it. He brews is a book in the Bible. <laughs> in case, in case you're tuning in and you didn't know. Nice. Hebrews is a book about That was awesome. All right. Um, what is a missionary's favorite car? A missionary's favorite car. Hey, if there are any missionary kids or anything tuning in, I want to know if you know the answer to this. What is a missionary's favorite car? I'm thinking it's got to be something like a mobile home. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Close, they but just not okay. close at all. What's a missionary's favorite car? It's a convertible. Ah. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. All right. Um, Elliot has one. Convert people. He's got a joke. Yeah. Elliot no, said, convertible. "How do you make holy water?" How no, do you no, make? No. Well, let's hear it, everyone, Parker. <laughs> uh, um, that was good. All right. Um, where was Solomon's temple located? Where was Solomon's temple located? I have no idea. On the side of his head. Duh! Oh, dude, that's where all of our temples are located. All right. Uh, here we go. <laughs> we got some awful. classics coming in. How long did Cain hate his brother? <laughs> How long did Cain hate his brother? I have no idea. As long as he was able. <laughs> oh. uh, that was good. That all was right. <laughs> wow. You got another one? Uh, hey, if you guys are doing our game, you got 65 seconds left. 65 seconds. Gave you an extra five seconds there because there's a little bit delay in the stream. So if you guys are just turning in, tuning in, choose one of these paintings, recreate it in the next 60 seconds, take a picture, send it to us. Ready? Second. All right, let's hear another joke. Hey, uh, do you need an arc? <laughs> um... <laughs> Do you actually want me to answer? Because I yeah. know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I actually didn't hear that one. It's classic. Wow. Hey, I think Amanda has a really, really good yes. one right now. That she would if you love want Amanda May Collette to make a guest appearance before guest she leads appearance. us in worship and tell us a killer joke, let us know. Give us a thumbs up really quick. That's a thumbs up for me. Yeah, I see tons of virtual thumbs up coming onto the chat right now. Amanda, you have to. The All right. Give the people what they I'll want. I'll do this. So. I'll just step off here. If you ever wanted to know the gospel according to Shrek, you can just turn to Psalm Body Wise. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so Way too good, honestly. Wow. That's All definitely right. the best one. Did we get any uh, answers the best in, in the comments about who painted this middle one? Sarah, do we get any, anybody, any anybody guesses? answering this guy? Mm -hmm, who painted American Gothic? Come on now. Parker Vincent. Parker. It was saying? me. I did it. <laughs> These are Parker's great great grandparents. Oh wait, no, this is a father and his daughter, right? I believe. Yeah, it's a f yeah, his son. Her, her. No, it's not. Everyone his thinks, daughter. Everyone thinks it's a husband and wife, but fun fact, it is not. Mm, interesting. Nobody's responded. Miss Hardgrove would be yeah. so disappointed in you guys. <laughs> Come on. It's Grant Wood. All right, hey. Grant. Let me give Wood. you a five second countdown. If you are out there and you are doing our game. I forgot what it was called. Vincent Van Covid. Yep. Uh, then you got about five, four. Caleb Regan said Grant Wood. Three. Hey, two, boy, Caleb Regan. One. Way to go, Caleb. Time is up. If you guys are playing our game, don't worry. Again, this was just to give you a taste of it. We're gonna be putting it on our social media accounts the rest of the week so that you can have more time and you can invest more creativity into uh, recreating one of these paintings in your house with your objects. So um, keep doing that later this week, but get back to your computer, get back to your phone, uh, get ready because we are going to transition now into some worship led by the joke teller herself, <laughs> the joke Amanda story. May Colette. Are we good? Oh. Parker, can you just pray and open up our time for us? Absolutely.
Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for allowing us to uh, meet together virtually. Uh, and uh, I just pray that uh, as we go throughout this time, we would just keep our eyes fixed on you. I pray for the rest of the night and that everything would just run smoothly. And I pray for each and every one of the students in our in our ministry, God, that, uh, yeah, they would just keep uh, keep focused on you and pour into you and, and love other people well. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Amanda, good luck, everybody.
privilege it is to um, be online and be together even while we're apart. God, I just pray that tonight um, that anyone tuning in right now will just experience your goodness and your grace. Um, that even in, again, the midst of darkness and, and loneliness, God, uh, would you just reveal to us um, that you have never left us or forsaken us and you never will. Um, and God, would you just allow us to use this time wisely that we would be dependent on you um, day by day, and that, that we would want to and, and have that desire to spend time with you. And um, Father, uh, would you just be with everyone through this time and, and continue to encourage uh, us as we, as we go through it. Um, thank you for, for never leaving us. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Amanda. That was awesome. Oh boy. So good. All right, Parker and I thought, you know, we wanted to get a little bit more cozy up in here. So cozy. hopefully with us sitting down, it feels more like, I don't know. Conversation. We're having a conversation. Just out with you guys. <laughs> Just chilling. Just hang. All right, hey, uh, if you guys uh, tuned in last week, are we both in the... Mm. If you guys tuned in last week to our first hashtag Hillside Online Live uh, youth group experience, uh, we introduced this series that we're doing for uh, at least this week and next week. Uh, we're calling it Make the Most of It uh, because I feel like, you know, one of the main questions rolling around in your head right now is what should I do with all this time that I have now? Uh, all this stuff getting canceled, all this time you're spending at home. Um, you're probably thinking, what should I do with all this time? What should I do? And our encouragement to you is, it's going to sound cheesy, but it's to make the most of it. Uh, and, and the question we're kind of answering in all of this is, uh, how should Christians respond in quarantine? What, what should Christians do in quarantine? Um, you could probably think of a million things just anybody should be doing in quarantine. You can Google what to do in quarantine. You can find a bunch of different things to fill your time with, a bunch of different activities you can do. Uh, you can take, I don't know, you can learn a new language. What's something else you can play do? Play some guitar, maybe. Play, <laughs> learn, play some guitar, you know. learn some guitar so you can one day sound like Amanda Colette. Uh, but there are a bunch of different things you could do in quarantine. But we, we, we don't want to just know anything to fill our time. We want to know what are some things that like Christians, people who follow Jesus, should be doing with their time specifically. Uh, and so if you guys are, tu are tuning in and you don't have any idea who we are or what we're doing here, um, just quickly want to say that I'm, I'm Ryan. This is Parker. We work here at Church of the Open Door. I'm the high school pastor. Parker's our junior high pastor. Uh, and, and we lead the youth group that normally meets at this time on Tuesday nights. And, uh, and so we're, we're creating this platform for all of our students to join. But if you just joined because you saw it was going live or one of our, our students shared it with you, we're super glad you're here. Um, and, and we hope that this is something that's interesting to you too. We, we want to we wanna tell you what we think are the best things that you can be doing with your time right now, now that you have more of it. Uh, and, and hopefully this, this series will be helpful in giving you guys some ideas. Uh, and so last week, what, what were some things we talked about last week, Mark? So last week, the main thing, uh, we were uh, discussing in John 15, specifically 9 through 13, and it was a lot about just loving other people and things that we could be doing during this quarantine time of making the most of it and just how we can be showing our love to uh, our family or our friends or things that we can be doing, trying to give you guys some ideas of how you can put that into practice of loving others the way that Jesus loves us. And so that was like the main theme from last week. Nice. Yeah, so we, we introduced our, our passage last week that we're going to be in during this series. So if you guys uh, want to take a quick minute and go get your Bibles if you haven't yet, yeah, go grab them. We were in John 15 last week. We're going to be back in John 15 this week. Uh, we're just going to be sharing our thoughts on a few verses in there. Uh, and like Parker said, last week we, we opened up talking about, you know what, what one of the probably one of the best things you can be figuring out uh, how to spend your time is, that wasn't a good sentence. One of the best things you can be doing with your time right now is figuring out ways how to care for other people. Uh, and so, so like again, like Parker said, we're we're called to love people as followers of Jesus Christ. That's our mm -hmm. one of our main callings in our life. And just because coronavirus has happened, just because you're quarantined, doesn't mean all of a sudden your mission has changed. Your 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 goal is still to love people. And so last week we talked about how we can be doing that. Yeah. Uh, this week we're back in John 15. We're gonna change gears just a little bit and talk about one. One other aspect uh, of how we should be thinking about spending our time. You want to take us to that passage, Parker? Yeah, so this week specifically, I hope you guys have your Bibles by now. Um, we're going to be in John 15, specifically verses 4 through 8. So the theme for this week is going to be abiding in Christ. And so that was like the, kind of like the, an overarching theme of John 15 as a whole of just abiding in Christ, remaining in Christ, spending time with Jesus. So the the main, yeah, the theme for tonight is going to be what does it look like to spend time with Jesus and to remain in, in Christ during this time and uh, in our everyday lives too, not just when we're in quarantine or in this unique time that we're in right now, but just how, how we should be living in our everyday lives and having God or Jesus be a part of our everyday lives. So that's going to be our main thing. So I hope you guys have your Bibles. We're going to go ahead and start reading it. Uh, you want to read it or you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, I'll read, I'll read the whole passage. It's just five verses, and then we'll break it down uh, one verse at a time for you. Uh, so starting in verse 4, again, this is Jesus talking. He says, Abide in me, and I in you. 
uh, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Missed it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there it is. Verse 5 now. I am the vine, you are the branches. Dude, why'd you get me the smallest font Bible? Sorry, you could bro. Find? That's all I found. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, we're back in verse 5 now. Uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. The branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Uh, and actually, I think before we, before we break it down verse by verse, uh, Parker, you had a, a story about why, why we're doing this passage. is because Parker had a, a cool experience, a cool story to tell about, about this chapter. And so we're gonna, he's going to start it off for you today. Yeah, kind of just going to give you guys like a little intro. Uh, we'll probably, I'll leave you with a little cliffhanger for, for next week. So you'll have to tune in next week to kind of to hear the whole story. But uh, yeah, I just started my senior year at uh, Baylor University. When I was down there, we, uh, we did a trip to uh, the border of Mexico in Texas. Um, it's called Awaken. The trip was with our church and it was over spring break. So we took a, there was like uh, hundreds of, of students from Baylor, from our church, went down there and did this uh, awesome, awesome uh, trip where we were just sharing the gospel and um, yeah, just like helping build stuff in the community and just, uh, yeah, creating relationships with people. But uh, we came back, everybody was just super, super fired up for Christ and super passionate about it. And we, we had like our specific team that we went with and our specific like uh, life group. And so uh, it was pretty much after spring break, we're going back to school. Uh, we're still on our little like camp high, high our camp high deal. And uh, this, this girl, this, this one girl in our, our life group was like, hey guys, so, like she posted on group me. And she's like, hey, uh, I'm going to be writing the word abide on my forehead in Sharpie and going to school. I'm going to be going to class uh, for, for the Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to be going to class with Sharpie uh, writing of abide on my forehead. She's like, no pressure, but like, if you guys want to do it too, like go ahead and do it. And it'll just be a really good conversation starter as like a visual reminder of how we can be abiding in Christ in our everyday lives. And um, so like she said that, I was like, gosh, dang it. Like, are you serious? Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm going to look weird. People are going to make fun of me. People are going to be asking me all these questions. And so I was, I was like, honestly, like really, really scared to do that. And like, I know that we're like not supposed to be ashamed at all of our, our faith and anything like that. But I mean, I was, and I, I definitely was like scared and, and definitely worried about like my reputation, whatever it was. Like, I was like, ah, people are going to think I'm weird, all this stuff. And uh, yeah, I was just like really worried about um, what people were going to think about me. And so I was like, you know what though, like, how am I going to be saying that I'm passionate about this and that, that following Jesus, abiding in Jesus is super important to me, but then when it actually comes to reality and, and it actually comes down to our actual lives and I'm not just surrounded by my life group and I'm actually going to school, like, am I going to back out now? Like, am I going to, like that, I was like, that, that'd be soft to do that, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's not, you know, like, that's not what I want to be about, you know, I want to unashamedly follow Christ and, and be out there with it and, um, yeah, just, just proclaiming that I'm a follower of Jesus and be able to talk to people because they were going to ask about, about why I had that. So, uh, again, so I decided, all right, I'll, let's do it. And so we, we wrote it on our foreheads, went to class, had, had a lot of really interesting encounters with that. Um, and I'm going to go into a specific story next week about what actually came about doing that. And it was just this incredible story about how, about how Christ works and how God's always working and he's doing all these crazy things and some crazy stuff happened because of that and and that whole whole thing led to some some awesome stuff so we'll we'll be talking about that next week so make sure you tune in next week to hear the end of that story but yeah it's nice. cliff stuff. hanger there cliff yeah hanger. i've heard the whole story guys and it, it is awesome so uh yeah be sure to come back next week hear the end of that story um and so parker told me that story and was like dude this would be an awesome like passage to go to uh, as we we're talking about what to do in quarantine and so that's why we're here because uh, of Parker writing a bite on his forehead, and, and we're, we're just thinking about this passage, wrestling with what it means for us now. Uh, and so let's, let's dive in a little bit more. Let's do it. Um, you want me to start off? You got it. All right, so we're, we're just going to go verse by verse quickly for the next 10, 15 minutes or so, guys. And uh, so don't leave. Stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned in. 
uh, and engage with this. Like really, really sit in, in this passage. We, we think it's going to be, be super impactful for you during this time. So, uh, oh, turn the page there. Uh, abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And so I love that we're, we're in this passage, in this verse, the second week in the series. I, I was kind of wrestling with it. Should we have done this first last week? Like, oh, abide in Jesus and then love other people. And then what we'll talk about next week. Uh, and so I was like, maybe we got it backwards. But I think it's actually really good because now it's telling us, hey, uh, you guys talked about loving other people. You talked about doing good things. But now let me tell you about what the prerequisite is for being able to love people well and do good things for people. Uh, and so uh, I, I was registering for college classes this past week, and as I'm looking, I'm in grad school now, yay, school for the rest of my life probably, but hey. Parker and I both are in grad school. Um, so we feel your pain, all you students out there having to, having to do homeschool, and I'm having to homeschool myself, and I'm not good at it. So, uh, But anyway, I was registering for classes last week, uh, and so some of the classes have these prerequisite sections, uh, which tells you what classes you have to take before you're able to take the one that you're looking at. Uh, and so what this passage is telling us is that there is a prerequisite to loving other people well and caring for other people and sacrificing for other people. There's a prerequisite to that. And that might sound weird. But what it says here is that if you are not abiding in the vine, abiding in Jesus, remaining in him, uh, you are not going to bear fruit. And bearing fruit is what the Bible talks about when it's talking about loving other people, doing good things for people, serving, doing justice, showing grace to people. Those are, those are fruits. Those are things that you are doing. And this verse tells us that if you're not abiding in the vine, you are not going to bear fruit. So last week we were talking about the fruit, loving other people, serving other people, how can we care for people during this time. And now we're saying, hey, if you want to be able to do that well, uh, you got to be spending your time with Jesus as well during your quarantine time. So you got to be abiding in the vine. That was verse four. What else do you have, Parker? Uh, yeah, so from that, like when we were talking about it uh, the other day, I was just, when I, when I think about just, abiding in Christ, I immediately thought about like our Takati trips that we take in the summer. Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of you high schoolers know about this and, and the incredible stuff that happens down in Takati, Mexico. But it's just, uh, and I wonder like why, why is it so amazing? Like, how, come, how come we're there working on the church doing like construction work for like eight hours and then we still have the energy to put on a VBS and hang out with these kids and play sports with them, have them on our shoulders, dancing with them. And then on top of all that, after that's all done, like we're, we're still have the energy to be loving and encouraging of one another, people in our own group, like the whole night. And it's just like, how does that happen? Like, how do we, where does that energy come from? And I was thinking like, every morning we're there, we're, we're spending time with God, like, like solo time, spending time with, in, in God's word, just uh, praying and, and energizing ourselves by God to, uh, yeah, just have the strength to do that throughout the entire day. Like we are, by abiding in Christ, he is nourishing us and filling us with, uh, yeah, what it takes to, to really um, love other people well and bear much fruit. So I think that was a, a really good example of just like, yeah, like spending time with God, like he will remain with you throughout the, the rest of the day. And yeah, mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, Takati Tzaka, is a great example of what it looks like to abide. You abide in Jesus when you're in Takati. Oh, yeah. uh, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> uh, uh, and so let's, let's keep going. Uh, we're going to just speed up a little bit. Let me jump down to, to just verse 7. Uh, where it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And so this, this verse might sound crazy to you. It's like, oh, ask whatever you wish. Is God a genie now? I'm going to make some wishes and then he's going to grant them. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's the point of this verse. I think what this verse wants us to get across and uh, our, our next gen pastor, David Newkirk, helped us understand this a little bit too. But the main thing I think Jesus is wanting us to see here is that relational intimacy with him is the key to all of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you're remaining in him and his words are remaining in you, one of the keys to abiding in Jesus is being in his word. Uh, so for his disciples, it was like it was, it was thinking about his teachings, all of his followers. He had to listen carefully to Jesus' teachings. Luckily, we have a whole record of his teachings and all, all of God's teachings in this book that we have, the Bible. Uh, and so if we're, if we're in his word, if we're uh, reading and meditating on his teachings, those are ways that we're abiding in him. Uh, and that's and the kind of mindset that comes out of that our, our prayers and our requests are going to be aligned with the will of God I think that's that's what Jesus is getting at the more that we abide in him and and, and really just set our course towards him 
uh, in, in just the, I don't know, the course of life. Um, as we set our minds on him, our minds and our hearts are going to be more and more aligned with him. And as we're asking and praying, we're not going to be praying for selfish things like a million dollars or fame or the most <laughs> followers on your Instagram account or anything. We're going to be we're going to be praying for really selfless things, things that are just right aligned with with God's heart. And so I love that passage that this whole idea of abiding, what we're talking about tonight, it is about investing into the relational intimacy with your Savior. Uh, it's about spending time with Him, focusing, thinking about Him. We can, we can go through the day thinking about thousands of things and not even think about uh, the person who came to the earth. And in a couple days, we remember that He died on a cross for us to bring salvation to us. And it's, it's crazy how we can go about our days and, and just forget about Jesus, forget about our Savior Jesus. And so this, this whole passage about a, abiding, we're focusing on him. We're setting our minds on him. The Bible talks about setting our minds on things above and not of the earth. Uh, and so I love that. And Parker, you got something for the last verse for us? Uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll read um, verse 8 for you guys. So, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So... With this, uh, I, I really think of just like, it's, it's like a chain reaction yep. that we were talking about. It's like, uh, by abiding in Christ, we're gonna, it's going to strengthen us to love other people. And by that, we're going to prove and show that we are Christ's disciples. And then by that, by people seeing that, by, by showing, showing that people see it, and then they ask about it. And that's when we can tell them about uh, our Lord, like our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so uh, I think it's so huge. And it talks, it talks throughout this, uh, this passage, it's just saying like, um, apart from apart from God, you can do nothing. You can accomplish nothing. You are you are. Uh, let's read. Uh, it says, um, "If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown in the fire, and burned." So it's pretty much sta stating very clearly that uh, uh, apart from God, you can accomplish nothing, and y you won't last. So we were kind of talking too about um, our youth group and how we don't we don't want our youth group to be people who are just Christians on Tuesdays and Sundays, we want we want to be constantly being nourished by God, by the by the vine, and uh, yeah, just doing like using Him to live live out our days. So that we're not like when we go off to college or when we're not here, we're, when we're going out the rest of the, the the rest of the week, and it's not Tuesday and Sunday. We're not we're still living out our calling, and we're still um, pursuing God and His will in everything that we do. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. And that's going to that's gonna bring us kind of to the close of this passage. Uh, our, our heart in this, guys, is that is that you are realizing with the time that you have now, uh, your need to make the most of it. And we think how you make the most of your time uh, right now in quarantine and out of quarantine is to abide in Jesus. So this whole, this whole visual picture of a vine and a branch or picture like a trunk of a fruit tree and a branch that comes off and bears fruit. Like Parker's saying, Sundays and Tuesdays, they're not enough. If, if you go to a tree and like you watch it bear fruit one day, break it off the next day, and then try to like smash it back into the tree and then break it off again like, and just pick the days that you want it to bear fruit, that's not, that's not how it works. And th this whole idea of abiding is this constant, consistent remaining in him. It's not a wavering faith. It's not a one that worships Jesus on Sundays and then like blasphemes him on Mondays or goes around uh, like living however you want the rest of the week. Remaining and abiding is a constant. It's a constant. And that's what we want from you guys. That's what, that's what we want from us. That's what we want from our leaders. That's what we want from anybody who is trying to follow Jesus Christ. We, we want our faith. We want our relationship with him to look like a vine constantly abiding in the branch in the sorry a branch constantly abiding in the vine so that we can bear fruit constantly uh, so that we can have a consistent bearing fruit we can continually do the good things that we talked about last week uh, we can love other people care for other people uh, and so I think the last thing we'll do is just throw out some ideas to you uh, what we think would be just great ways for you to abide in Jesus during this time uh, you want to hit them with the first one, Parker? Yeah, uh, something that, that um, I, I really like doing, especially when I was in college, it was, it was just really easy doing it. You just go in, go in your room by yourself and put on some worship music. And I don't know, whatever you got to do, dim the lights, whatever you, whatever you got to do. Just sit and, and be with God, praying to God, worshiping God. Um, whether you need music or you want to do it in, in silence, whatever, just spending time with God. And if that means waking up 15 minutes earlier, I don't know if you guys are like me, but you just want to squeeze out every every last second of sleep that you can possibly get but uh 
set your alarm 15, 20 minutes earlier and just spend time with God and I promise it will nourish you for the rest of the day. It's going to energize you and you're going to look at things differently throughout the day. You're going to, you're just going to have a different mindset on if something negative happens, you, you just know how to handle it. You just, it just, and it's not promising like, oh, if you spend time with God, your day is going to be perfect, you know, but um, you're going to have a different outlook on the negative things that come your way. And uh, yeah, so that's just something that I've, I've noticed and I want to encourage you guys to do just, yeah, set, set your alarm a little bit earlier and, and spend some time with God this week and see what happens. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And just going along with that, guys, we'll send it out to you later, uh, probably tomorrow at some point. Uh, we, we created a couple Spotify playlists for you guys to listen to. Uh, one will be just normal worship songs that we're kind of singing uh, in church or in youth group that you can sing along with, ones that you'll know the words to, uh, hopefully. Uh, that you can just worship along with if that's something that appeals to you. And then the other thing that, that we'll have on there is a, a more like reflective playlist, so slower songs, maybe more uh, quieter songs, not so many like drum beats or solos <laughs> or anything like that. Um, uh, and, and what I like to do is take those more reflective songs and, and throw them on in the background as I sit and kind of just pray with God. Uh, sometimes it helps to just have some, some like reflective music playing or some words of somebody singing about Jesus to just help you reflect uh, in your prayer times. Maybe you open up the Word in the morning or in the evening, or, uh, or if you're taking a lunch break from your schooling, uh, spend some time in God's Word, open up to Romans 8, uh, throw on some reflective music in the background, just create, create an atmosphere where it's going to be conducive for you to abide. Uh, if you got your friends like uh, on your TV screen playing video games right in the background, if your door's open and your brothers and sisters are making a racket and you can't focus, like create yourself a space uh, and an atmosphere where you, you can do this kind of abiding. And abiding isn't just having quiet times. Like we want to try to encourage that. Abiding is just, is just focusing on your relationship with God, being present with him as you walk step by step in your relationship with him. Uh, and so, so the Bible app is a, just a really good resource for you guys to use. We're going to try to uh, kind of capitalize on some of the things the Bible app has to offer. I know a lot of you guys have been doing plans together. You, you study the Bible together on there. Uh, you can, you can keep each other accountable on how you're, how you're doing this week at what, what, how you're spending your time reading scripture, uh, anything like that would just be really helpful. Uh, and yeah, I would just encourage you guys, something Parker and I were talking about is if it's like a visual representation you need, uh, like if your bedroom door, if that's the place that you're going into and out of all day long, cause you're spending most of your time working in your bedroom, maybe use your door or that like threshold, the door frame as like a visual reminder, tape something up there, put a buy it on a piece of paper and put it up above your door frame. So that as you're going in and out of your room, you're just reminding yourself, man, I need to, I need to focus on Jesus throughout my day, not just when I'm tuning in live to, to Hillside online, but all throughout my day. And so I think that's all the time we got for tonight, guys. Uh, it's been a blast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we encourage you guys to keep following our social media accounts for different ways to be abiding in Jesus and making the most of your time during this quarantine. Uh, junior hires, we got a Zoom right after this. Ooh. Be patient. We will send out the link. Uh, it'll just take a few minutes. High schoolers tomorrow night. Uh, and yeah, we, we, we're, having a, we're having a blast with you guys. We're, we're hoping that you are enjoying what we're doing. We love you a lot. And we miss you guys. We miss you so much. Um, hey, if you want to throw out in the chat how we did tonight, rate, rate my PowerPoint skills on 1 to 10. I think I did a little <laughs> bit better this week following along. Um, but give, give me a, a be generous. Tell me I did a nine because I'll still try to improve to a 10, but um, be honest because I definitely wasn't a 10 tonight. But um, hey, we, we've just enjoyed being with you guys tonight. Hope you enjoyed interacting with each other in the chat. Did someone throw out a one for me? Why are you guys laughing over Lucas there? Arnata said 10 out of 190. Oh, oh. 10 out of 190. <laughs> Lucas, your gift card has been revoked. <laughs> oh, oh, he changed it. He said 10 out of 10. Oh, oh. <laughs> he just wants that but Elijah card. said it was great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, uh, tune in next Tuesday. Hashtag Hillside Online live. Say your memory verses. Romans 8. Do it. Get on it. Get on it. Nine square and a fifty dollar Amazon on. gift card. What more could you want? Yeah. Libby said a hundred out of ten. All right, hey guys. Uh, Friday is Good Friday. Our church has a, a thing they're putting on. Check out their website. And then Sunday is Easter. Churchtheopendoor.com. Tune into their our virtual service. Love you guys a lot. We will see you next time. Can you guys turn that off, please? So, <laughs> so next time. Just up here. All right. See, see you guys later. Guys have, have a, a wonderful night. night. Remember. To